Just make sure. Hi, everyone. Thanks for having me here. Ooh, I won't yell. Uh, this is really cool to be here. This is my first year at the Social Innovation Summit. Uh, we started Coast Protein just a couple of years ago, so to have uh, a bar making company where we handmade bars in a little kitchen in the back of a juicery to be speaking in front of you, it's very exciting for me. Um, my background, uh, just for a little context before we launched Coast Protein, is I worked in the mining industry in northern Canada, specifically in Yukon, uh, northern British Columbia, and the Northwest Territory, so really remote areas. And what I did, uh, for the most part, was work in mine remediation. So we go post operations, we look at the land and say, how can we fix this? And what really, for the most part, came up, didn't work. We couldn't really remediate anything. There was too much uh, leftover heavy metals, too much destruction. Uh, and it was really kind of defeating. So what I started reading more about was other industries, other primary industries that would have the same issue. Uh, so the slide that's up right now is a very typical setting uh, all over the world you find this in rainforests, temperate rainforests, in grasslands where there's a land clearance situation, a company cut, comes in, cuts all the trees down, and they'll run cattle through, or sometimes goats and pigs. Usually works for about a season. Uh, forests just, they're not made to put nutrients for grasslands or for uh, cattle feed back into the system. So it works for about a season before they have to do it again, and they have to clear more land, they have to set up another cattle feeding situation and they have to clear more land next year. And what's happened is in kind of the North Americans perspective and searching for protein, we've essentially just chased all the forests away and are and still not getting enough protein. So I know everyone's eating lunch, but what we're selling are, are these. These are uh, the common house cricket and they are actually roasted and a little salted if, I, if I'm right. Uh, so that's why they're so delicious looking. Uh, and what, what we're doing with them is introducing them into the North American diet in a way that people can understand uh, and be excited about. So just want to mention that we are a values-based company. It's very important to us, but we will just be talking about sustainability today. That's a normal, very low-tech cricket farm. Uh, what you'll see there, that can be built in a old shipping container, they can be stacked up for vertical farming, uh, they can be built in old chicken barns, abandoned areas, suburban areas, urban areas to reduce uh, trucking and shipping costs. Um, but really what makes it sustainable is the cricket themselves. So crickets have a one-to-one -one feed ratio, which is unparalleled when you talk about conventional protein. Uh, beef cattle is usually about 20 to 30 feed ratio, and so that's about a kilogram or a pound, I know in the States, a pound uh, of feed will create a pound of crickets. Uh, they don't need water. They can actually get water from their food they eat. Uh, and they can use pre-consumer or post-consumer waste, which is things like uh, ugly vegetables or uh, the waste that comes from like the beer making process. There's lots of different food streams. So some very high level statistics about using crickets as a protein source. They have about 2,000 times less water than uh, beef cattle. This is on a one to one ratio. Uh, and then 100 times less emissions. But really exciting for what my background is, they use 13 times less land uh, for the same amount of protein production. And that really comes from the fact that we can harvest crickets or in a lot of other types of edible proteins, uh, edible, excuse me, edible insect proteins uh, between six and eight times a year, which again, you, you can't really do with anything else. Uh, but what's happening in the industry right now, like what I'm here to speak to you about today is how much it's changing. Uh, actually, just yesterday, the biggest ever uh, funding went into a UK company called Agri Protein that's going to be building factories all over the world to make more uh, edible insect protein. They got 100 million US. Uh, it's super exciting for our industry because it's really validating even to small uh, food processors like myself. And what you have here, this, this slide, is a much more robust, much more uh, technologically superior system to the original slide. And what it allows us to create, again, are crickets, but at a faster rate and a more sustainable rate with using less land uh, and creating a more nutritious protein. So if you think about protein bars and protein powders, people typically think about a bodybuilder or an endurance athlete. And they'll typically go for your like, skinless, boneless chicken breast. That's about 33% protein by weight. Crickets are 66% protein by weight. Uh, also double that of beef. And for people who, like how many people just raise a hand are kind of plant-based diet, paleo, vegetarian in that world? 
It's really bright <laughs> for half the people. Um, so crickets naturally are very high in B12, iron, magnesium. Our products that we're sampling outside uh, have about 30 to 50 percent of your daily value of any of those micronutrients. So it's a great alternative protein source that also provides a great natural source of nutrition. Uh, so again, our products were, uh, are outside uh, for you to try. They're all natural. And uh, I'd just like to thank everyone for listening for the short presentation and thank Saks and 1% for the Planet, who we are uh, partnered members with. Thank you. Thank you.